Ooh, what a beauty. But can we make it better? Good morning and welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Eddie. I hope you're all having a good day. Today we are getting near the finish line for the 350Z belt. But what we're gonna do today is install a catch can. Yes, it's a $20 eBay catch can, but I promise you. Well, I can't promise you. I don't want to be legally liable for anything. But it's gonna be 10 times better than what it is right now. Plus, it's gonna have a baffle, it's gonna be fully connected, and it's gonna run a lot better than any cheap baffle cans that you see out there. So I am missing one part, but that's fine. We'll do what we have today, plug it up, get it done, and uh, yeah. So my method to my madness today is for this one here, what I did was measure the inside and I got a nice, a nice five and a half inch copper tube. So that's step number one. It fits perfectly in there, just the right amount clearance that we need. And this is the major source. So what we're going to do right now is, to make it baffled, we're going to go ahead and drill some points over here and some points over here all the way around. Because the way that these come, a lot of eBay ones and a lot of other baffle cans, is that they come like this. Just simply like this, closed lid. And what can happen is, the oil, even though it's coming in, doesn't necessarily drop to the bottom, but it can easily go into the intake by transferring there, because this is a closed source. So what we do is we interrupt that by putting a baffle here, a little custom made baffle here. It slides in and it'll hold into place. Next thing you're gonna need is some awesome RTV. What this is gonna do is gonna allow you to put this on there and hold it into place. So guys, let me begin drilling this here. That way you guys can see how it comes out. So, first things first, clamp it down if you don't have a, a big vice grip or a table vice grip. And then you're gonna go ahead, get this and the hammer. Where's my hammer? And then you're simply gonna just tap it just to make a mark so you could drill it. Boom. That'll be a spot to drill. Let's see how that comes out. Alright, look at that. We're starting to make it into a baffle now. Guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. Not at all. Now I can do the other side. Let me switch out my battery because this one's dying. Yeah, so as most of you know, we've been building. So just in case you're a possible new subscriber, welcome to the channel. So far we've been restoring and rebuilding this 350Z here. And we are just about done. It's never done, but to finally be able to put her on the road. And I am ecstatic. So far, if you haven't seen any of my videos, I put it up here for the suspension. And also I did another one where I did the brakes, the big brake kit front and back. But yeah guys, we have a lot to do. But luckily right now we're finished with the motor. We just finished taking care of all the leaks, replacing valve cover gaskets, cleaning out the intake. Yeah, we've been doing a lot with this car. But now today, I just wanted to make this video for you guys in case anybody's interested in getting a catch can. And uh, if you're like me, unfortunately I want a Neo Chrome, which is the one you just saw. And that Neo Chrome, I really didn't see it anywhere unless it was expensive, like two, three hundred dollars. And I don't got a serious setup to be running a two, three hundred dollar catch can, <laughs> to be honest. I need something just basic, you know? So I'm like, all right, let me get an eBay one. And looking at the baffle systems I saw online, it's pretty straightforward. You know, basically the concept is that the oil goes down, air distributes, and the air stays on top. 
as the oil stays in the bottom. And that's basically, in a nutshell, what a catch can is. All right, so I just got my battery. We're good to go. Just stepped inside. Now we can finish drilling the holes that we want. But yeah, guys, it's pretty straightforward, a baffle system. It's not too complicated. But what I would say is, if you was in my predicament and the baffle can design that you really like didn't have a baffle system, hey, don't worry. Do what I'm doing and you'll be good to go. Baffle systems are not that complicated, guys. So I hope this helps someone get the idea to do something like this, save some money, and just enjoy the process, you know? All right, guys, so we're now back. Let's see here, I'm gonna do one in the bottom. The opposite side. A uh, full battery works. I love a full battery. Mm -hmm. Alright, good. So, this here is five and a half inches. This here is about five. Let me get my measuring tool to be exact. So guys, the inside of this here is five, five and three fourths. So the inside of this is five and three fourths. This here is five and a half. So it has enough to allow the air to go down, come out, be vented from the sides. This side is gonna be more towards the wall, like so. And the two will be towards the middle of the intake. All right guys, so with this inside, it's actually gonna have a quarter of a space as well, aside from these vents here. It's gonna have a quarter of a space in the bottom of this to vent as well. All right guys, so I went ahead and just drilled one more. So I have four on one side and two on the other. This is gonna be on the intake side and this is gonna be on the opposite side against the wall of the catch can. Now I'm just gonna clean it up with my flathead, make sure I get off those big debris. All right guys, so if you could take a look here, this is where I'm gonna put on my 350Z. It's gonna be right here. I got my own little custom bracket that I'm gonna put right here. And that's the way it's gonna sit. So for me, I know that I want the tubing to be visible on this side, because I have this nice clear vinyl tubing that's over here, lets you know how much oil is actually filling up within the canister. And I just took this off and rotated it to see where I'm gonna put it. And I like the way that looks right there. So to have it like this will be the most functional way of having this right here. That way I could run one line going into the intake and then one line to the PCV valve over here. Thing is, I'm gonna have to remove this piece right here on top because the one that goes to the intake is the longer one, as you can see. There's a short and a long one. One is for the in and one is for the out. The exhaust that goes into the intake is actually supposed to be the smaller one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this and flip it over and then we'll actually go from there to put on our copper fitting. So let's go ahead and just switch these over real quick and then we'll take it from there. All right, so here we are. Nothing too crazy. And it's not like they're on that tight either, so. That's a good thing for us, I guess, right now. So now this is proper. Now I have my PCV coming in through the long way and my intake on the short end. Now it sits properly. So from here, what I'm gonna do is just to avoid any air leaks or anything like that, I'm gonna go ahead and silicone this RTV all the way around on the intake and the exhaust side. So let me grab out the RTV so we can take care of that. I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down real quick. I would say probably 60 inch pounds, so it should be good enough for this. Good. Right here, see those little gaps? Very little, but we don't want any air leaks in our system, so we're gonna go ahead and just RTV this and this. 
but we also gonna do something on my car specifically and that is put a little gap here that way we could fit the half inch copper pipe that we have because 3 8 wasn't available let's grab our little heater holes that we have there cut a little piece to put on top of this and that way that'll allow us to actually go ahead and put on the copper baffle so here we are I went ahead and got my digital caliper and I know the half inch is not gonna go over this here because this is a 3 8 okay so I measured out everything that I need to measure as you can see there I measured out this part right here the diameter of the inside the inlet and the outer diameter I measured that as well and it's a little over a little over than half an inch I can use this here to make this work with this so the way it works is this 3 8 it fits on but like I said it's a little over so what I did was I shaved it down on one side just to bring down the millimeters just a little bit more that way I could fit this on now it's not gonna fit on like this what I would have to do is what we actually gonna do is put some RV here here and here like I mentioned earlier we're gonna fit this inside the half inch pipe like so if we can make it go so as you can see make it fit there boom now that that's on we have a rubber piece that allows us to fit it on here so it'll also act like a gasket but not the purpose of it and then from there we could fit it all the way in boom so for me I could shave down the rubber part a little bit more to bring the to make the diameter a little smaller that way it could fit more snug but I want a nice tight fit because it's going to be a pressurized system and at the end of the day I know it's going to fit right now the way it is because I already tested it so yeah you see and this is my gasket so basically this little piece right here came from my 3 8 line that I bought to do my connections and stuff so yeah and guys in case you don't have one this is a necessary tool it's called a digital gauge get yourself one I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested. So if you do a lot of custom work like this, you're definitely going to need it. But alright guys, let me get my RV, let me start doing everything over here, and then we'll come back and go full circle with everything that was done. So just to test fit, you can see it there, fits nice and snug, that's the most it's going to go because of the screw, but that is fine by me, check that out. So now. As you can see, I used that as an adapter. I'm going to go ahead and put RV all the way around on the inside, even there, and we should be good to go. I'll let it sit for maybe about an hour or two before I touch anything. I had to shave it down just a little bit more, but it acts as a good washer. It does the job. Hey. Yeah, so you see those little gaps? We're going to cover those now. Just gonna go ahead, clean my finger off, pack it in. All right, there you go. It's not the beautiful, most beautiful job in the world, but it'll get it done. So let's just pack this one in as well. I'm gonna dress this one up. some RV in here as well. Now I'm gonna fit this in here. All right. Then just push, make it flush. All right guys, there you go that oh also make sure that the baffle the one with the most holes is towards the wall so just rotate it like so yeah it's gonna be towards the wall right there just basically make it go away from the intake side so like so on my on my setup is like this boom check that out 
And now I'm just gonna go ahead and seal up this little area right here. As you can see, there's a little gap. I'm gonna cover that up. Now that looks nice. Okay, so right now I'm gonna head inside, go eat a little bit because I am hungry. But this is it in a nutshell. Take a look. And then we'll be back and check her out. All right, guys, so last night after eating, went to the gym, came home, was a bit exhausted. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stay in, I'm gonna relax because as you guys know, I've been building this car day in and day out. Whatever hours I have available was dedicated to the car. Now, here she sits, nice and clean, all put together because around the middle of the night, I came outside, I was like, I'm gonna get bit by mosquitoes, that's totally fine, but I'm gonna get this done. I'm gonna plug up everything that needs to be plugged up, and yeah, she is now done. So all I have to do now is just put the oil in and we'll be good to go, but let's take a quick look at um, my oil catch can setup, because it came out pretty clean, not for nothing. Got my own little custom bracket over here going on, um, yeah. I really do love the way it came out. I do. But let's enjoy the scenery, guys. So right now I'm going to fill her up with oil. That way we could just start the car. And, and one thing I did last night, though, because I want to check the pressure on the car manually because... I'm hoping it's just a gauge, I really am, but it always reads low pressure. And I know the sensors on these cars are not that reliable, so I'm doing a manual oil pressure test. So here, I have my gauge attached. to the oil pressure sender. That way we can go ahead and double check, see what's going on here. So now that we actually have everything set up, we're good to go. Everything is installed. My catch can, I'm so happy with. Yeah, guys, it looks beautiful. It really does. It came out perfect. It's almost factory. I mean, the lines are gonna be nice and hidden. It just, it looks good. It really does. Check that setup out. You got one line, intake, boom. Then you got the uh, PCV going into this one. Then you got the oil line on this side. She looks nice. Also what I did was, um, I used tape here, electrical tape. What I did was wrapped it a few times, maybe five times or so. That way it could create a little space between the bracket and the paint finish. But also it allows it to hold it in place when you clamp it down with the metal bracket. So you don't have to use any bolts or anything. And uh, yeah, she is, you can't even move her. She is snug. But all right guys, let's fill her up with some oil so we can get her on the road, even though it's rainy. Yeah, she, she needs to be driven. Uh, well, what's up guys? Sorry to interrupt the video, but here we are about to end it. And yeah, if you guys remember in the very beginning, I said this. I am missing one part, but that's fine. We'll do what we have today, plug it up. Yes, that one piece. I ended up getting but for a later video down the line and that video itself was gonna be the final upgrade to my canister it was gonna be a whole nother video but I said you know what right now we're here let's just add part two to this video and call it a day so guys in this clip you're gonna see my missing piece bro I'm making a video you know they say cats are independent but they really not <laughs> not at all unbelievable but yeah guys right now sorry for the mess i don't know if you guys can see it but we're gonna be switching to the bedroom we got enough space to make a studio back there so that way we can have one-on-one -on -one chats and you know be a lot more productive so guys enjoy this clip and then right after we'll circle back with anything else that we need to go over all right guys so first things first we're gonna go ahead and just open it up
Hey, there you go. And just take that last one off. So does an oil catch can work? What do you guys think? Good, good, good. Let's drain that out. So if you guys seen my previous video, you already know that I put a copper pipe in here. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stuff it up in here. So, first order of business. Let's put that like that. All right, good. So, people use wool steel wool and I did not like how it shreds comes to find out they make this baby here which is a lot better not for nothing look at that yeah the steel wool you can actually like literally pull it apart flake it shred it even number three that they had available over there all right guys sorry about that battery died of course I'll put the links in the description below in case you guys are interested but let's go ahead and just stuff it up nice and neat Good, good, good. All right, guys, I'm just gonna edit this in real quick. I just wanted to show you that I actually took it back out and stretched it thin enough. That way I could place it through the back as well. That way it's a full 360 coverage. So as you guys can see there, much better. There you go. All right, guys, and there goes that second clip that I was telling you about. Yes, I cut it that way straightforward, pretty simple, but the stainless steel scrubbing pad is what I use in order to keep the oil to the bottom. I only need a one in this catch can. Some catch cans, the big, big ones, you could definitely use two, uh, but for my setup, one was good enough. Now you could just go ahead, tighten everything up, put it back on the car the way you originally had it, and take it from there. The bracket that I got was essentially from Home Depot. So in case you have a Z and you wanna put it exactly where I have mine, just get the bracket from Home Depot. And of course, you're gonna to have to drill it out because the bolts, I believe are M8, if I'm not mistaken. So they're a little wider than what's already available on that bracket, but you can make it work. You just gotta do a little drilling. All right, cool, we're back. Sorry about that, the battery died. So let's continue. So yes, this was probably after like 200 miles that I ended up doing this. So that oil was basically collected over 200 mile range. And as you guys see, it definitely does work. Stopping the oil from going into your intake, which can essentially clog everything up and lower your airflow quality is something that could definitely be avoided by using an oil catch can. Now I know you guys saw a white synthetic pad in there, however, eh. There wasn't enough space to use it, so I just returned it. But if you have a bigger catch can, you could definitely use that in the bottom. My only concern with actually having it in my possession and I'm about to install it was that it may get clogged up. It may. So at the end of the day, the scrubbing pad will definitely serve its purpose to keep the oil down and allow the airflow to go up. Well, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and just close out this video here because I did an oil pressure test in the same video shoot. Yes, I know I should have done it in a whole separate one, but in this one, I did the oil catch can and the same day I did the oil pressure test. So I'm just going to cut the video here and do the oil pressure test in another video in case you guys need to do it on your Z. All the items that I use will definitely be in links in the description below. So in case you want to do this project, you could definitely go ahead and just copy and paste to make it easier. Or if it gave you any ideas on how to fix your oil catch can to make it even just a little bit better, then hey, give this video a big thumbs up. The only things you may not find there is the miscellaneous items such as the hoses, which you would get at your auto zone or your auto parts store, whichever one is convenient for you. Napa, Advanced Auto. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> and for the copper pipe, you could definitely go to your local Home Depot or hardware store. So little items like that won't be in the description below because yeah, you have to get them cut for yourself and take it from there. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So if you found this video helpful in any way, definitely give it a big thumbs up. I hope you gather some insight on how to make your oil catch can even better, especially if it's a cheap one like mine. There is always room for improvement. All right, guys, so if you have any questions or comments, definitely put them in the comment section below. And for the latest updates on my car journey, don't forget to yeah, add me on IG. That way you can stay up to date with everything. And if you're new to the channel, definitely consider smashing that subscribe button. Join the build, join the vlogs. Let's have a good time together. And if you're already subscribed and you made it this far, thank you so much for the ongoing support. I hope you guys have a good day and an even better week. And like always, think for the future, enjoy your present, 
and don't focus too much on the past. Peace.